dating when you're fat sucks. It sure does. You know what else sucks? Dating someone fat. That's why this girl is smoking and presumably drinking. She's like, what am I doing with this guy? And that's why your bad date, the viral shortest first date ever that left you mortified, was mostly your fault. Because if you look like this on Bumble, but you look like this in real life, you're gonna get a few short dates, and you shouldn't be surprised. This is Maggie Smith. She just blew up on TikTok, that's a lot of likes, for a sad story about a short date. Apparently, he met her at a restaurant, walked her outside, and said, I'm just not feeling it. But it's cold. And now Maggie wants to open a conversation about how to treat others, even if they're not your physical type. But it's Maggie who needs to learn how to treat others. And I'm going to explain why using the All Quadrants, All Levels Consciousness Map by Ken Wilber, who hopefully has a great sense of humor, since his life's work in consciousness and spirituality is becoming increasingly associated with a YouTuber named Homath. That's a lot of likes. Here he is having a sense of humor, and here he is all jacked and swole like me. Great minds think alike. And what he created was a mind map to help you place blame more accurately. Or for personal growth or to save the world or whatever, I use it to complain about dating with extreme precision. So I'm going to show you how to think more clearly using the quadrants as a part of the map. But first, if you want more precision in your cognition, you should sign up for Shortform, the sponsor of this video. We all want to learn more things faster, but there are too many things. That's why Shortform offers the highest quality book summaries on the market. Look at this book I found in my Airbnb. It's 200 pages about Rhodesia during the 1960s. You can't read everything. I think this carpet's from the 60s. That's why Shortform does the reading for you and gives you the good stuff. Not about Rhodesia, though. More like self-improvement, psychology, philosophy. It's nonfiction you can use. This one's good for Twitter. I use Shortform to brush up on books I've read, like The 48 Laws of Power. Here's an exercise to apply what I've learned and to check out new books that I might want to read. Shortform has new books and articles every week, and subscribers vote on what they cover next. There's even an AI browser extension that will summarize anything on the internet. For a free trial and 20% off, use my link in the video description. Short form, discover the world's best ideas. Like baiting your enemy and taking credit for the work of others. Trust me, it sounds better when you read it. Now let's get back to the map. So AQAL stands for All Quadrant, All Level. I already made a video about the levels, more are coming. Today I'm going to use the quadrants to show you how to figure out what's going on. I'm going to show you what Maggie and her date were probably thinking, what they did, what they knew about the situation going in, and how the whole thing works. My map of Maggie's date looks like this. Don't worry, I will explain step by step and I will finish coloring. In my last video on maturity, I drew the quadrants like this. It's pretty simple. This is you. This is your mind. This is all the minds around you, the mass mind or your culture. This is your behavior, and this is the system or society you live in that your behavior interacts with. So this is you, and this is what you interact with, and this is mental, and this is physical. On this chart, I've got two people, so I arranged it like this. There's Maggie's mind and her date's mind, both connected to the culture they exist in, and then there's Maggie's actions and her date's actions connected to the society or system that they both exist in. So first, here's Maggie's viral video along with my translation. And before I get started with all this, I just want to be clear. I'm not making fun of Maggie for being overweight. I'm making fun of her for concealing it and then acting surprised that her date did not like that. Negotiating a relationship means choosing someone who likes what you have to offer, which means you have to let them know what it is. So here we go. Makeup on just for this date, so it better go well. Maggie begins by saying she wants a return on her effort, which is not how dating works. The other person has to actually like what you have to offer. You don't get credit for putting in time. This is the historically typical exchange. That makes Maggie basically the girl version of a nice guy. I tried to look nice for you, so you should like me. So Maggie's action of putting on makeup makes her desire a payoff for the effort, but that does not entitle her to say how the date better go or how her date should feel. He can feel how he wants. And there's nothing in our dating culture to suggest that putting on makeup equals date goes well, just like spending money doesn't mean she has to go home with you. I'm not posting this, probably, if it doesn't. So she says, I'm not posting this if it doesn't go well, then it doesn't go well, then she posts it anyway. This is because Maggie wants sympathy. 
So after her date, we'll go to Maggie's mind. She felt sad and wanted reassurance from the hive mind, which is a part of how the world works now. And the hive mind is always willing to dole out infinity reassurance because the culture of the hive mind is very toxic. Women are always right and men are always wrong. And Maggie, of course, as a part of this culture and a part of this system, she knows this. And so she makes a video begging for sympathy and posts it to TikTok. It did not go well. Notice Maggie's use of the third person. It did not go well. So it's the date's fault, not I misled my date so he left. Truthfully, it lasted less than two minutes. I walked up, he gave me a hug and said, are you hungry? Let's go inside. We went inside. He said, actually, can you step outside for a minute? I stepped back outside and he said, I'm not trying to offend you, but I'm just not feeling it. So I walked to my car, came back home. Dating when you're fat sucks. There's the third person again. It's dating doing the bad thing to her and not her being a part of the equation. So that's Maggie's story about what she did and what was going through her mind. And it leaves a lot out. I filled in all the missing parts, like uh, what the guy did and what was going through his mind and what qualities were important about the surrounding society they lived in and the culture that they both belonged to, in order to illustrate that downloading and using an app, which we all know to be ruining dating, and then posting deceptive photos, going on a bad date, getting rejected, and then crying for sympathy on TikTok was probably not the best course of action. So let's go over Maggie's story again using the map. Remember, these colored areas correspond to these colored areas. This is divided up into inside and outside, or mental and physical, and then there's the individual and in context or collective. So the red is the individual mind, the yellow is what the individual did, the purple is the mass mind or culture or what everyone around them thinks, and the green is the system or society, what everyone around them does and... and how the world works. And here it is again individually. This is your mind, your behavior, the culture you're embedded in, and the society or system you're embedded in. So this is you, this is everything around you, this is mental, and this is physical. So according to Maggie, she downloaded the app and engaged with it. She set up a profile, which she left out certain parts of. She set up a date with a guy and then put on makeup and went out and got rejected, came home and posted about it on TikTok. That's pretty much all she let us know. The full story is much more complicated. I broke it down step by step and I'm gonna go through it chronologically and I'm going to use my favorite colored pencils, which are the colors of these boxes, to put X's in these columns to show which of these elements contributed to this happening. So before you go on a bad date, dating has to exist. And we take that for granted. Maggie did, and her date did. They both decided to use the app and then downloaded it and used it. But historically, dating is actually pretty novel as part of our culture, and that's where this whole thing began. So I'm just gonna put an X here on both sides for culture. And as we all know, dating apps have ruined dating already, despite it not being perfect in the first place, so we're going to put some blame on the system as well. Step two was they had to create profiles. They had to actually use the app. Now, we don't know what the guy's profile looked like, but Maggie did tell us that he was disappointed in her and not the other way around, so we can't really fault him. On the other hand, Maggie did post photos deliberately that she knew were not representative of how she looked in real life. So we'll give her a strike for her actions, what she did, and then one for that she knew better. And we know she knew better because we're all part of the same dating culture. We all know what the cultural standards are for behavior and appearance or so on, like lying about your height or other aspects of yourself are frowned upon. And yes, omission is a type of lie. It means leaving out important details. Step number three is swiping. Once Maggie and her date downloaded the app and made a profile, they then had to use it, which presumably went pretty well for Maggie. I don't know about you, but I would probably swipe right on this. I don't see why not. 
And as we all know, the experiences of men and women on dating apps are very, very different. Women swipe left a lot, men about half and half. Women get almost two times as many matches per 1,000 swipes compared to men. And women match with 36% of the times that they swipe right, while men only match with 2%. And that's with men overall, so average men are going to be doing worse than these men. So assuming that Maggie's date was average, it was probably tough to get that match. The way that these apps are designed is one of the things about technology that makes the modern world a little bit more miserable. Guys get too much rejection, and girls get too much acceptance of the wrong kinds, and the apps also provide advantages for certain kinds of guys over regular guys. And another thing is that we tend not to understand the experience of the opposite sex. Women don't think about what the apps are like for men, and men don't think about what the apps are like for women. Men would be really happy to get these kinds of messages, and Maggie definitely didn't think about what this step felt like for her date. Men have a lot of swiping to do, and we don't always have time to look at more than just the pictures. This gets pretty exhausting. So I'm going to put a strike for both of them in the way things work, since the app puts everybody in a tough spot, and I'm going to put a strike down in culture for just Maggie, since the app did not encourage her to think about his experience. And to be honest, he probably didn't think about her experience either, it just didn't matter in this case. And that's because of number four, the match. Now Maggie didn't do anything wrong here, she saw a guy, liked him, and swiped right, good. But the guy, he's done with this part. He's done with his 10,000 swipes, he's done being exhausted. Once you get a match, now you have an opportunity to look closer, and notice that all the photos are from the neck up. And we all know what that means. If you don't show relative details of yourself on the apps, you're probably doing that on purpose for a reason. So I'm going to give him a strike right here for not looking out for himself. Then they had to prepare for the date. Now you remember what Maggie said. Makeup on just for this date, so it better go well. So, putting on makeup is something that is socially expected in our dating culture in most places with most people. However, a lot of girls have been saying lately that they want some kind of credit for it, and that's not how it works. Here's an example of the mindset Maggie has been exposed to on the internet. This girl says she's seen a trend where girls do their makeup and calculate the cost, and she came up with $392 to look like this. But of course, she didn't divide that by the number of uses, which is delusional. This is the hive mind, which is toxic, I'll get to that later. This is making women feel like, I spent $392 to go on a date, which leads to a whole hell of a lot of entitlement. So Maggie wanted credit for doing something that is kind of socially expected, usually, but you don't have to, but more importantly, it doesn't guarantee you any results. And not only that, she completely ignored the effort that he put into the date. A lot of us have to drag a razor blade across our faces. That's no fun, but we're not charging you for it. So I'm going to give Maggie one strike under culture for being a part of the hive mind, and one strike under the way things work, or society, or the system, for interacting with the hive mind, and I'm going to give her two strikes under her own mind, one for feeling entitled to something that she's not, and one for ignoring the work that others put in. That brings us to the beginning of the date. Basically, this guy saw Maggie's photos online, which looked like this, and like this, and then he saw her in real life, which looked more like this, and he felt a little bit disappointed and ended the date early. Now, no one did anything wrong there. But according to Maggie, this guy also apparently said, I'm sorry, it's your weight and she didn't ask because she didn't care. Now, I don't know exactly what this guy was thinking, but it seems like he was just a little upset that he wasted time and money and said something mean. There wasn't really any other reason to point that out. So I'm going to give him just a half a strike, and just in his actions and not in his mind, because it's okay to feel whatever you want to feel. It's not always okay to say it out loud. And saying it out loud in this case was kind of okay and kind of not. He was sort of saying, hey, I wish I would have known this beforehand, but he also sort of said it in a way that he didn't have to. After the date is over, we must once again consider the existence of technology. TikTok 
is a platform that allows and even encourages low effort blog posts like the one that Maggie made and even favors this kind of post over other kinds in the algorithm. So when Maggie's date was disappointed and pointed out her weight, she felt sad and wanted reassurance from the hive mind. And then she posted her video where she avoids responsibility for her actions and what we know very well she knows and displays an entitled attitude for behaviors that are pretty standard. So not only is that a strike in all four boxes, for Maggie, of course, not for her date, he's gone home, it's also a really powerful reminder of why the quadrant model is so effective. Maggie has a behavior pattern of interacting with the hive mind, the TikTok, system, which creates a culture that reinforces certain behaviors that Maggie sees and feels and expresses back into the culture, which becomes the hive mind, which becomes behavior, which becomes beliefs and feelings. It's all interrelated. So after Maggie's date, she had a feeling and made a video and uploaded it to the system, and the algorithm presented it to the culture, and the culture reinforced the feelings, and those feelings are going to become more videos and more hive mind and more culture and more feelings. And all those feelings and all those videos going out to all those hive mind TikTok girls is just going to reinforce more and more girl right guy wrong. And that would mean taking all of these marks over here and just hiding them conveniently in the not people zone because anyone who brings them up just doesn't matter. You can't say these things. That would be misogyny. So we'll just put that right there where it's all nice and clean. And now look how bad this man is. Man, bad. He talked about her weight. So that's how you use the quadrant model to separate reality into different perspectives so that you don't miss out on huge chunks of what's going on. So once you separate everything out into who did what and what they thought and felt, and what are the common expectations that we all know we have in our culture and the way that things work, it becomes really obvious that when Maggie says she wants to open a conversation about how to treat others, what it means is that Maggie wants sympathy for being rejected from the hive mind, who is going to tell her that girls are always right and never wrong, and guys are always wrong and never right, and that she doesn't want any responsibility for knowing basic things about her own culture, like that the vast majority of guys are going to have certain expectations, and if you dodge them on purpose, then you're going to make them feel disappointed and like they wasted their time. And of course, the guy could have saved his own time by noticing the red flag of neck up photos only. Basically, he was getting a lot of this and none of this. But that's just a medium-sized lazy mistake, whereas most of this is deliberately ignoring reality. The popularity of this video is concerning. It suggests that a lot of girls out there just don't want to hear anything about accountability for their own actions. And if enough of them fail to realize that their thoughts and behaviors become the world around them, that's a pretty bad sign for their ability to develop into a mature adult level which would be somewhere around here for the Western world. The behavior that Maggie exhibited in this video was somewhere around here. So the level three part of it was, hey everyone, look at me, pay attention to me. Not anyone else though, not like the guy who also had a bad time, just me. And then the level four part of it was, we need to open up a conversation. We need to talk about the rules for how to treat each other. And that is controlling. It's manipulative and naggy. It's self-protective. Maybe we should call her naggy. She is pretending to care about social norms by saying this is how we should treat people. But conveniently, the way she wants to treat people is just a cover for her own egocentric personal needs, which are specifically covering up what she looks like and then shaming people for pointing it out. So that does it for the quadrant section of this video. I hope you understand the quadrants a lot better and how they relate to each other and why it is so important to differentiate between what is coming from an individual mind and the culture it comes from and an individual's behavior and the system around it. But I'm not quite done with Maggie because this whole thing is just crazy, particularly the internet access that girls now have to the hive mind that always reinforces girl right guy wrong and is making more and more women insufferable. So Maggie, the way that dating works is you have things that you offer and things that you want and the men you date, they have things that they offer and things that they want. And if 
what you offer doesn't match what he wants, then it's not going to work. This is the table conversation. You cannot just be the table. You can't just exist. You have to have things that the other person wants. And I think you know very well that this appears to be something men want and this doesn't. And I think you also know very well that men put in a lot of work to go on dates too. It just seems kind of crazy that you would get featured in People magazine for asking men not to do this to you when you did all this to him. And this seems like a popular thing to do, to have the photo like this and then show up like this. We even have names for this technique. There's the master of angles because you always get the angle just right. We call it the iceberg for obvious reasons. And that has happened to me before and it makes me feel like, you know, why did you get my hopes up and why did I bother getting ready and it makes me want to say something mean too. So maybe instead of crying to the hive mind, which definitely does not make the world a better place, maybe you could try thinking about what others want from you instead of just what you want from them. But even if you don't care and you just want to get your way from others, it would still benefit you to be honest up front instead of posting only the deceptive photos because then you would save your own time and money on going out just to get your feelings hurt. Like they used to say, honesty is the best policy. Isn't it kind of funny how every modern problem was already solved by a short saying from 400 years ago? I wonder why we keep forgetting 